Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now today, the topic, I, 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 I sum this topic as faith and medicine faith and medicine i believe it's timely for the time we are in and i believe it will minister strongly to as many as out there undergoing any kind of ailment first and foremost like i've always said faith is still the most important subject in this life it ranks you in the same operation capacity with god in Luke 1 37 the Bible says for with God nothing shall be impossible we all know that but in Mark 9 23 it says all things are possible to him that believeth now it says with God nothing shall be impossible but if you have faith to him that believeth all things are possible so it actually puts you in the same operational capacity with God in Hebrews 11, it says, For without faith, you cannot please God. And the book of Revelation makes it clear, we are created to please God. So we are actually created to walk by faith. And so today we'll be looking at the place of faith in the administration of medicine. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, many people say, okay, that's the word of God. It says, love is the greatest. And no doubt love is the greatest. But to get to the love, you need to walk by faith. It is faith that gets you to that point of love. For the Bible says God is love. So love is the greatest, but faith is the most important subject. To buttress my point this morning, in Proverbs 9 verse 1, it says, Wisdom has built herself and has hewn herself on her seven pillars. Meaning, wisdom has seven pillars. Now, what is a pillar? A pillar is a support by which an object stands and exerts itself. Meaning, there are seven attributes that if a man has wisdom and he does not have those attributes, his wisdom will not be displayed or it will not be appreciated. For example, the word favor in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 says it's Favor is an act of goodwill. In the book of Genesis, when Joseph faced Pharaoh, the Bible says God gave him wisdom and favor. So favor is the reward network for wisdom. If a man has wisdom and no favor, his wisdom will not be rewarded. And that's why the appropriate thing for Pharaoh to do to Joseph when he interpreted his dream was just to release him from prison even joseph wanted just to be released and go back home but because there was favor on his wisdom he was made the prime minister of egypt he didn't naturally merit such a reward in the book of ecclesiastes chapter 9 it says there was a poor man in a city who delivered the city by wisdom but no man rem rem remembered him after he displayed such a wisdom how can a man save a whole nation and nobody will say thank you to him? Why? There was no favor. So his wisdom was shortchanged. Now, I said faith too has several pillars. And if a man has faith and these pillars are not in place, his faith will be shortchanged. To buttress my point, another pillar of wisdom is time. If a man has the right word to say and he says it at the wrong time, his words, no matter how good they are, they will not be appreciated. You must have the right timing for the right word. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says there's a time for everything. So time is another pillar of wisdom. I'm not talking about wisdom. I'm just trying to use it to buttress the subject of faith. Another uh, pillar of wisdom is the mouth. In Luke 21, Jesus said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. If you meet with people who have wisdom and don't have oratory, and they want to talk, and they want to give you the answer to your solution, I've seen some on WhatsApp, on Facebook. Oh, hello, my people there. Where? Oh, gosh. Sometimes you just switch off. He may have the answer, but he doesn't have a mouth. 
When a man has oratory, the oratory captures your imagination and is able to deliver the wisdom. Now, faith likewise has seven pillars. And we're not looking at the pillars. The aspect that relates to medicine is the one we'll be looking at today. Now, for example, the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 36, you have need of patience. After you have done the will of God, doing the will of God is faith. He said you still need patience that you may receive the promise. Patience is a pillar of wisdom. In Jude 20, it says, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So praying in the Holy Ghost fortifies your faith. That prayer is a pillar of faith. In James chapter 2, it says, show me your works and I will show you my faith. It says, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. It said, as the body is dead without the spirit, that is how faith is dead without works. So, if a man has faith and no works, his faith will not work. If his faith is as big from the earth to the heaven, and he still has no works, it will not work. In Galatians 5c, it says, our faith worketh by love. Now, I don't want to go to all the um, pillars of faith. Another pillar of faith is wisdom. In Luke 15, we have a story of a young man called the prodigal son. He took his inheritance by faith. Why? He got it before time. We said faith is more powerful than time. Faith is more important than time. In Matthew 15, they approach Jesus and say, oh, sorry, in John chapter 2, they approach Jesus at the wedding feast. And said they've run out of wine. And Jesus said to them, my hour to begin miracles has not come. Then Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to them, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. He did that miracle, not because it was time to start miracles, but there was a demand of faith which compelled him to do the miracle. So faith is more powerful than time. Faith can drag the future into the present Faith can take, the Bible says, Enoch by faith was translated. He dragged a 4,000 year transition operation of the rapture and by faith he dragged it forward 4,000 years. By faith, the Bible says in Matthew 10, we can shorten the time. By faith, we can shorten the time this coronavirus is supposed to operate. If it's supposed to operate for three months, we can shorten it to less than three weeks. But it takes faith. Faith is more powerful than time. So in Luke 15, this prodigal son approached the father. He's supposed to have his inheritance when the father is dead. But because he had faith, he said, give me my portion that is due me. He got his inheritance before the time. Now, wisdom says, I am the one that brings riches. When a man has faith, he can get anything. But if he does not have wisdom, whatever he gets, he will invest it wrongly. And they will all go down the drain. But when a man has wisdom and he gets by faith things, he can invest those things and increase in riches. Praise the Lord. So the prodigal son lacking wisdom, but he had faith, got an inheritance, but wasted everything on prodigal living because he lacked wisdom. So his faith was unprofitable. He did not benefit from the faith of what he got. An attribute of this wisdom is medicine. One of the operations of wisdom is health and medicine. Now, let me relate an incident that happened this about 15 years ago. I was then in my parents' house. It was about night four, and I had this cold. It was nasty. I couldn't sleep. In fact, I was struggling to breathe. I just thank God it wasn't now. They would have thought maybe it was something else. And I couldn't breathe well. I couldn't sleep. I was sneezing, and I went before the Lord, and I said, Lord, what do I do? Because it was quite late in the night. I couldn't lay hold on any drugs. And he said, he gave me the scripture in James. He said, is any afflicted, let him pray. So I knew I had to pray. So I prayed for about 30 minutes. When I'd finished praying after the 30 minutes prayer, honestly, all the, um, all the cold just vanished. My nostril, my nasal cavity was clear and I could sleep. I was perfectly well. So I slept. About nine months later, I guess I overworked myself. I was in quite some dusty environment and I had a cold again and it was night four and I could not sleep. So I just assumed it was like before when God told me to pray. 
So I started praying. After 30 minutes, the cold went worse. So I asked the Lord, what's wrong? And the Lord said, take this drug and go to bed. Now, I don't want to mention the drug. It's a common cold drug, not much in use nowadays. But in those days, it was the most common drug for, I don't want to mention it, that people use. I don't want people to just quote me. I want to go and use this if you have a cold. Now, he said, take that drug and use it and then go to bed. I asked the Lord, I said, the last time you asked me to pray, what's the difference between the last time and now? He said, that last one was a demonic affliction. This one is a medical condition. It's not a demonic affliction. Your immune system is low. You need to take this drug and go to bed. I took the drug. I went to bed. And the next morning, I was perfectly okay. God pronounced the drug. I guess he's a general practitioner because he prescribed figs for Hezekiah to take when he was sick. And so when I took it, then it dawned on me that God works with science, he works with medicine. I was reading a book by Kenneth E. Hagin titled, I Believe in Visions. In that book, I can't remember the chapter, Kenneth Hagin said his wife had a goiter and he just felt his wife was going to die if she went in for surgery. So he began to pray for the Lord to intervene. He was correct because if she had gone for that surgery, probably God was not in it. The surgery was not the problem because you see what the Lord recommended. If you, if you gain access to that book, read it. And he said, when he prayed, Jesus appeared to him and said, truly, if your wife had gone in for that surgery, she would have died. But I've come to answer your prayers. Now I have answered your prayers. Your wife will not die. Now tell her to go for the surgery. I thought the Lord would say, now I've appeared. Bring your wife. Let me touch her and she's healed. He said, no, tell her to go for the surgery. Then the wife went for the surgery and she was healed. Guess what? She even outlived Kenneth Hagin himself. And it dawned on me, God works with medical science. I once heard a woman give a testimony. And I want to correct this. She gave birth and she said, I want to thank God who helped me to give birth. That's correct. She said, I didn't give birth through CS. I gave birth through normal delivery. That's very wrong. People need to understand that whether you give birth through CS or through normal delivery, if the delivery is successful, God is involved. You can't condemn a CS surgery and make it look as if it's not an act of God. In Genesis chapter 2, God was the first surgeon on the scene when the earth was created. The Bible says he, first he put Adam to a deep sleep. That means God was the first anesthetic, anesthesia. Then he cut Adam open. That is surgery. Then he removed one of his ribs. That is orthopedics. God was the first surgeon. God was the first uh, uh, anesthetics. God was the first orthopedics. Then he closed Adam back. Now, if you remember, when he created Adam, he breathed into Adam. But the Bible never says he breathed into Eve. So what did he do? He took stem cells from Adam and cloned Eve. So Eve was cloned by God. Eve was not breathed into. So whatever aspect of science you look at that, God was the first. So to give a testimony and say, I didn't do CS, that's, that's an unenlightened state. That is trying to put down the work of God. All successful surgeries are backed by God. And all surgeries that failed, God was not in it. The surgery is not the problem. It's the involvement of God in it. The medical prescription is not the, is not the problem. It's the involvement of God in it. If you look further, God is the first nutritional biochemist. In the book of Leviticus, he gave all kinds of food we should eat and we should not eat. If you look well in the food, he said we should not eat. They contain more of fats that are harmful to the body. If you look in the book of Revelation and Ezekiel 47, it talks about leaves for medicine, fruits for healing. So God is a nutritional biochemist. He's a surgeon. He's an obstetric and guy in the book of Psalms. He talks about how bones are formed in the womb. And if you look at the pattern of first, second, three, fourth trimester, it follows exactly what God said in the book of Psalms. God is a first general practitioner. God is a medical practitioner. There is practically any profession God is not involved. He's a lawyer. He's a judge. He said, 
come before me, Jesus said, shall not the judge of the earth in Genesis act right? God is a judge. Then he said, bring forth your reason. Let us reason together. He's a lawyer. He's an advocate. He's a judge. Oh, Jesus. He's a doctor. He's all practices and all forms of medicine. God is the first. So my conclusion is, medicine needs faith to work. And the aspect of faith in medicine is what we're looking at today. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. In Psalm 104, I read verse 14 to 15. Psalm 104, verse 14 to 15. We just want to look at a few scriptures that buttress the fact that God himself inspired doctors. If I see medical profession as not just a profession, but also a calling, just like police work is not only a profession, but a calling. In Romans 13, the Bible says policemen are ministers of God and they carry weapons to enforce good and drive out evil on behalf of God. So before you run down policemen, remember, it's not only pastors that minister, they are ministers of God. Doctors are agents of God to save humanity. In Psalm 104, from verse 14, he says, He caused the grass to grow for the cattle and herbs for the service of man that may be bring forth food out of the head. So he caused herbs to grow for the service of man. I'm sure you know quite a lot of drugs are made from plants and from herbs. And that's one of the reasons God causes herbs to grow for the service of humanity. In Ezekiel chapter 47, I'll read verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 47 I'll read verse 12. And I read. Now, this is a vision Ezekiel saw. And by the river, upon the bank thereof, on this side, and on that side shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. He shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters the issue out of the sanctuary, the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine. God said, use the leaf for medicine. In Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22, I read verse 2. In the midst of the street, let me back up to verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. If the leaves are for healing, now don't just take leaves and just eat like that. No, they are to be processed into medicine for healing. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, the great apostle, Apostle Paul, was speaking to one of his converts, Timothy, who also is an apostle. And I believe very strongly that Paul, we saw in the scripture, raised the dead. God used him to heal all manner of diseases. From this scripture, Timothy was sick. And what I expect Paul to do was to do what he was doing before. Lay hands, speak the word, command the demons to fly, and they get healed. Listen to what he told Timothy, verse 23. Drink no longer water only, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your often sicknesses. So Paul is recommending, wine then was medicinal, 
It was used for some form of anesthetics. Maybe, I don't know whether um, Timothy had ulcer or, or it was definitely, he had an infirmity that was slightly recurring. He said, for that often infirmity, so it was recurring. I believe Paul must have prayed, but he said to him, use wine. Don't tell me Paul didn't pray. He said, I thank my God in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 14, I think verse 5. He said, I pray more than ye all. There's no situation Paul won't pray. So Paul must have prayed for Timothy. But even after the prayer, Paul still told Timothy, use wine for your stomach. That means he's giving him a prescription of a drug to use. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 8, I want to bring out something here which will help us to understand that we need faith in the application of medicine. Jeremiah chapter 8, I'll read from verse 20. And I read thus. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. We are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people are my hurt. I am black astonishment has taken hold on me. That means something is wrong. Now God is asking, why people seek, in verse 22, is there no balm in Gilead? What's a balm? A balm is like a cream, a medicinal cream that is used for illnesses. There are different kinds of cream. So God is asking, is there no balm in Gilead? Okay, they say balm. Is there no doctor there? There is a doctor. Then why is the health of the people not recovered? They say, doctor, there are drugs and people are not healed. It's part of what we're facing with the coronavirus. And God is saying, if there are doctors and if there are drugs, why are people not, I'll tell you why they're not healed. Faith is not there. Faith must be there. So God is not saying, don't use drugs. God is not saying, don't go to the doctor. God is saying, drag me into the administration by faith. And you will see a phenomenal recovery. Now, I would go, uh, I remember once I was um, with a friend. She's a pharmacist, wonderful. I guess she's even a member of the pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. So I was at her pharmacy, and when I came, I said, oh, Pastor K, sit down, just hold on. Let me attend to these clients. We'll talk. So I sat, and somebody came with a prescription and gave it to her, and she said, okay, the doctor said you should use this drug for three days. If it does not work, then you have to come, we'll change it to this one. I said to her, oh, oh that drug is not going to work. Because one, you have exhibited doubt in it and your words are not of faith. Your instruction on the drug is not of faith. There is a physician who has given a prescription. There is a drug who has made available. Now we need to find faith in this um, system. I said that statement should have been spoken first. Use this drug for three days. You will definitely notice a lot of improvement. Nevertheless, you must come back. I need to review you to know whether I should continue with the drugs or change it or discontinue it completely. So go for three days and let me see you back in three days. You will definitely feel much better. I said that will work because that is a statement of faith. I was the professor of medicine. is a pediatrician. I believe he's one of the best pediatricians in the world. That's what I believe. He comes from a family of all pediatricians. pediatricians. So I was in his office, we were talking, and I was sharing the subject of faith with him. And when we concluded, he said to me, for what you just shared, as a medical practitioner, I should emphasize the prescription and its benefit more than the ailment. I said, perfect. We are not to deny the ailment, but we are to emphasize the prescription and its benefit without denying the existence of the ailment. That's Genesis chapter 1, 
when God came on the scene and saw the earth dark and was without form and void and God saw that there was darkness that's Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 there was darkness all over the deep now God did not deny the existence of darkness he didn't say I reject darkness like some will do he didn't say Tofiaka I, darkness is not my point no he just said let there be light so the medical practitioner says so I will look at it and say you need to take this you need to take this You'll be much better when you take this. You need to take this because, so he's still acknowledging there's an ailment. Because of this that you have, you need to take this. When you take this, it will treat this, it will cure this, and you will be fine. Then you need to see me back after this number of days so I can review you and know whether to continue the drugs or discontinue. In that situation, is emphasizing the prescription and de-emphasizing not denying the ailment. God will come on that scene and we're going to have a remarkable healing. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.